The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning to you, the world famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO FM in Jessup 105.5 on your FM dial, Big Dog Country. Butch Hubbard here with you along with Bob Morgan on this Wednesday morning, the very first day of May. Looking for mostly sunny skies today once the morning fog burns off and high today, kind of like yesterday, around 89 degrees. The autumn hover doubles at 9.6 feet and just barely rising and should crest right around 9.9 to 10 feet. All right, uh, world-famous Butcher Bob Show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear, by Murphy Builder Supply in Jessup, Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup, and by the Wolf Animal Hospital. And good morning, Bob. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. Doing good? Yep, counting down for tomorrow's 430 doubleheader. That's Everyone right. Wayne good. County, Thomas County Central, second round of state playoff action, Yellow Jackets versus Yellow Jackets. Yep. See some spring football today, so they'll take my mind off a little bit. But I see I'm trying to find things to do to count down until tomorrow, 430. But excited about tomorrow's doubleheader. Again, four straight shutouts by the pitching staff. So if the pitching holds up and get a few hits and some runs, we should be in good shape tomorrow. But it should be an electric atmosphere tomorrow. I'm sure Thomas County Central at 26-4 going to bring a good crowd down here to support their ball club as well. So it should be a fun day at the ballpark tomorrow at 430. But well, with that record, they should have placed first in the region then, right? Uh, they didn't place first. They couldn't beat Harris County. Oh, three of their four 26 losses. and 4, and they still didn't place first? Wow. Three, three of their four losses to Harris County, number one seed for the oh, region. So okay. Harris County won the region. Yeah. That region. A couple of good baseball teams. Mm-hmm. All right, we're looking forward to it tomorrow. First pitch at 430 for the doubleheader. And we encourage you to get out there and pack the park, wear that gold and white and black and yellow, and have a good time out there and cheer the Yellow Jackets of Wayne County Yellow Jackets on to a victory. If for some reason you cannot make it, we'll bring the action to you so you can keep up with the uh, Wayne County Yellow Jackets right here on 105.5 FM, around the world on our website at BigDogCountry.com, and on your smartphone. If you don't have a free app yet, just go to your favorite app store, type in Big Dog WIFO. Follow the instructions. The Big Dog logo will come up on your phone there, and you'll be able to click on it for Wayne County Baseball Plus, the morning show, and many other spe- um, uh, special local programming. And then we're not doing the local programming. We have uh, we stream Fox Sports Radio 1370 AM, the Buzz WLOP down it. And so lots of ways that you can uh, participate. But the main thing is get on out there and support the Yellow Jackets, and let's pack that part and support the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. Right. And if you don't make it till game two, again, don't freak out when they charge you $10 for the second game because the ticket price is $10 tomorrow, no matter when you show up. That's right. You so. can show up before the two games, middle of the second game. Between the games, middle of the first game, it's 10 bucks to walk through the gate. So to get your money's worth, watch yes, both games. Right. <laughs> right. and if it is an if game on Friday, it's at 5 o'clock. It's already been set. Ticket price for that will be $7 if it gets to if, if game on Friday. So. Okay. Hopefully we can avoid that, but it should be a good series. Like I said, everybody says, well, what's, what's Tom's kind of, I said, when you get to Sweet 16, you're not playing the Sisters of the Poor anymore. You know? <laughs> you're playing good baseball teams. So you got to pitch well, hit well, play good defense, and the team that does that wins the series. If, you know, it should be fun. But, uh, you know, same same familiar teams in the bracket, you know. There's no secret who's got – some of the best teams in the state. You know, it's Wayne County, Thomas County Central, Carrollton, Loganville, Locust Grove, Stars Mill, Buford, Kell, Ola, McIntosh, Whitewater, Harris County, Walnut Grove, Decatur. So, you yeah. know, it's the familiar suspects yeah. still alive in Different baseball. Year. So, Same horses. Uh, and Wayne County hoping to get that Elite Eight round. Again, it'll be the winner of the Carrollton-Loganville series. Loganville's a one-seed region champs from eight. They take on Carrollton, a two-seed from region seven. So we're pulling for Carrollton because if Carrollton wins and Wayne County wins, the Elite Eight round will be here at Howard Bell Warren next week. If not, we'll travel to Loganville, take on Loganville, who we played this year earlier up in Loganville. they got a beautiful ballpark, so either way, it'll be a good setting for the Elite Eight action. Okay. Uh, but Buford's on the other side of the bracket, so we won't see them till the championship round. All right, sounds good. The Wayne County varsity baseball team, second round of state playoff action, first pitch at 4.30 tomorrow, doubleheader. Get out there and support the uh, Yellow Jackets at Howard, Bow Warren Field. 
And if you haven't been out there at night, you'll get to see the new lights out there, those LED lights for the second game tomorrow. Right. Brighten it up real good. It'll be the first state playoff game under the lights. So that'll be fun. Okay. What can we look forward to in the concession stand, Bob, with the Home Run Club? Yeah, they got everything you need. Hamburgers, <laughs> hot dogs, sausage dogs. I said I still like the pretzels. They got two different types of pretzels. They got the regular salted pretzel and the cinnamon pretzel. They got nachos, popcorn, candy. They got it all. They'll up, have um, it packed for you tomorrow. Yeah, so Bring your appetite. Yeah, so bring your appetite. All that money helps the baseball team. All that money goes to the Home Run Club. And, again, they just pump it right back into the program. So they do a tremendous job. So – Come on, support the home run club tomorrow at the ballpark. So, should be good weather. Forecast looks good. Mm-hmm. I don't think the rain's expected to get in until Friday. So, hopefully, we can get that doubleheader over with and not worry about weather on Friday. Yep, uh, tomorrow, uh, you know, kind of overcast, 40% chance, but um, hopefully, it won't rain. But 40% is better, better, bad, better, better than 80%. <laughs> So, um, so a little more, a little more clouds moving in tomorrow and Friday, and um, weekend right now looking pretty good. Wayne County, man, just can't wait for the big ball games tomorrow. Second round of state playoff action. What was it? Two years ago, twenty seventeen. Was that when we got to the uh, two state years ago, yeah, two years ago, finals? We the finals in Savannah. In Savannah, yeah. right? Two years ago. Two years ago, I said all well, these kids were on that team as sophomores, so. They know what it's like to get back to that arena, so hopefully we can get there. But should be a fun series tomorrow against Thomas County Central. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Uh, you and I have not had a chance to talk about the draft, and uh, I'm not sure if you and Jonathan went into it any. Uh, let's uh, let's yeah, take uh, – Jonathan didn't watch any of the draft. He didn't watch any of the draft. I know he's a baseball guy, so you and I can talk football right now. How did our Atlanta Falcons do – in the draft. I thought they did well. I said they got that big offensive lineman from Boston College, which is Matt Ryan's alma mater. I think he personally called him <laughs> said that's who he wanted. So Who's the, who got him? Well, the Falcons Matt. got him. Yeah. But okay. Matt Ryan, you know, yeah. he needs protection on that line. You got that big offense, you know. Like I said, those are your best friends, the offensive linemen. They yeah. got the best linemen, one of the best linemen in the draft from Boston College. I mean, yeah. They got some other talent as well. But I thought the Falcons did well. I thought, they, you know, and you just don't know until it all pans yeah, out. Yeah, you don't know. You know, all these expert you opinions, hope. you just don't. You know, I, yeah. I can't believe they just, they're just crushing that poor boy from Duke, the, the quarterback that went to the Giants at number six. But looks like a good quarterback to me. So I don't know why they're well, – you know, The Giants must have seen something in him. Well, he comes from, he, you know, he's comes from that cut cliff. You know, he's the quarterback guru, you know, quarterback to Manning, right. Peyton, and Eli. So they like what they saw. Big, tall kid, fast kid, too. I understand his time in the 40 was excellent. So so he's so, fast and he's tall. to see over this big yeah, lineman. Yeah. Smart quarterback. So, but yeah, every, 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 He's got to be smart. But every, every TV <laughs> broadcast was just crushing. They're still crushing, but they don't know. Well, I let's, tell, let's tell hope them. that uh, he proves them wrong. Like I said, I tell that story all the time. They always give out those annual awards at the, at the Super Bowl media week and I remember getting LaDainian Thomas standing up and saying how he was an undrafted free right. agent and one of the best running backs in the league and said those Mel Kuypers and Todd Macheys don't know what they're talking about. Don't <laughs> he was he's a saying. great, great running back. Great running back. So it's all opinion. All, you know, just did he play for San Diego? Played for San yeah, Diego. Yeah, he did the he yeah. did the Campbell Soup commercial with his mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great running back. Yeah. Now he's an analyst on the NFL Network. But I think the Jaguars had a good draft. And I said that. Kid from Kentucky fell in their lap. So I was now Josh Allen, position? defensive end. Defensive you know, end. So. Okay. Get somebody there getting the quarterback. It was nice to see eight Georgia players drafted, so that was good to see. Um, you know, eight Kirby, of them. Kirby was happy about that. So yeah. Holyfield signed a free agent contract to play with Carolina. So Well, that's good for recruiting. You, uh, you know, I know Alabama pushes that big time, and uh, Georgia's the point right now, and say, listen, you've you know you got the talent, you got a good chance of getting uh, a, a pro career. Come to Georgia, you'll get seen a lot on TV, big ball games, you know, and um, make yourself some money down the line. You were talking about the offensive line, and um, I'm not sure if this Boston uh, um, uh, prosp- uh, prospect is going to um, pan out, but if he does, it's great. And uh, of where they're going to put him on the left or right side, and some people wonder, you know, why do you you know, everybody said that left side, you have that big left side tackle and guard and end out there. 
it's because most quarterbacks are right-handed and they've got their backs to that side. And so you really need your protection on that side because the quarterback can get blindsided. So you need your best lineman on the left side of your line if you're a right-handed quarterback. You know, the story I liked about the draft, that Bo Sweeney was there with his four defensive linemen who all came back for their senior year to win another national championship, and they all went in the first round of the draft. So, you know, <laughs> I asked him how he was able to get them to all come back and not get them to jump early to the NFL. He uh-huh. just said that, you know, it's just a commitment to the university, commitment to him, you know. So he they told didn't go? They didn't go early. You no, know, all four of them went in the first round of the NFL draft this year. So they won the national so championship. So they did come back, win another national right. championship, and all four of them. All four went in the first round. Right. So it was a great story, but you know, just nice testament to see that, you know, it's nice to see kids come back for their senior year and play. Okay. So I was watching the Steelers draft. They got the running back out of Kentucky, and Kevin Culper said the reason they picked him was because they liked his commitment. He played in the bowl game. You know, the standard now is all these stars skip the bowl game. Right. Well, for him, it was important to play in the bowl game and right. have the school win the bowl game, which Kentucky did. They beat Penn State in the bowl game. So, But Pittsburgh drafted him, and that was the, one of the reasons why they said they liked him. because Sounds of like his a family, doesn't it? Yeah. So, Pittsburgh had a good draft, and they – Jumped up to get Devin Bush out of LSU, so or I'm sorry, out of Michigan. So they got they got a good draft. So I was happy with their draft. And who did you say is going to be the quarterback for Jacksonville starting in, in August? Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Yep, from okay. Philadelphia. Won the Super Bowl with the Eagles. That's right. Did they just not want to pay his contract, or figured they had younger talent? No, they got the other got the other quarterback, yeah. and the guy got injured. So you know he was second string quarterback. So okay. he didn't want to be second string. They don't okay. want to play. It's like these college quarterbacks. They don't want to sit on the bench. No, no, they don't. They want to get out there and play. Everybody wants to play. I want to play, coach. Put me in. Just, you know, I was still amazed that Arizona took Kyler Murray with that number one pick. But that's a heck of a story for Oklahoma. Back to back quarterbacks, back to back Heisman Trophy winners, back to back number one overall picks in the NFL draft. So that's an amazing story. How their last year quarterback? How's he doing? I mean. From you said two years in a row. Yeah, Baker Mayfield. Baker went, Mayfield and Kyler Murray win. Right. So Baker Mayfield's starting with the Cleveland, Cleveland. Browns and Kyler. And he's doing pretty decent this past year, didn't he? Had a good year. Yeah. Okay. I well, wish this kid the best uh, there in Arizona. So all the pressures on Jalen Hurst, the transfer from Alabama, now to Oklahoma. So. Oh, that's right. Could they win three in a row? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They possibly could. You think Nick Saban's been sitting around saying, what is Dabo Sweeney doing at Clemson that I'm not doing since they beat them both times the national championship game? No, I don't think he You don't think – you have to. I mean, you're sitting there with the you know, rank number one draft just about every single year. You're uh, Nick Saban, you've won, what, six, seven national championships, something like that. And two times you play Clemson for the national championship, you get beat by him for how long has Dabo been there? Seven years now? Six years? Somewhere along there? What Nick Saban's probably looking for is another contract because Dabo just signed a major extension. Oh, was oh, that big or what? <laughs> and the, the word is that Nick Saban has it in his contract. He's supposed to be the highest paid college You've got coach. to be kidding me. No, that's, his, that's his contract. Ooh, I'm not going to have to come off so possibly. I'm going to have to give him more money. No, that's probably what he's concerned about more than. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, it's about, always the about the money, the money honey. <laughs> Had a nice night last night. You know, Ralph went and got his. Uh, Italian chef back in time. Oh, so Ralph Hickox has got Houston, his Italian Houston, chef shows, back yeah. that we had here on the Butcher so I had a chance show. to go down there and have that. You know, when he was on the show, he talked about that eight layer lasagna. Right. That was incredible. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Bob some, is still, his mouth is still watering the over best that. lasagna I put in my mouth last well, night. Well, you got an official <laughs> trained Italian chef down there yeah. cooking for. Um, uh, for the strand, um, yeah, I'm, uh, just, strand I'm just telling you, it's, it's if you this? like lasagna, it's as good as advertised. And then he cooked okay. some dessert. I can't remember it. To, it the, I can't remember the name yeah, of the it. Strand Bistro. Yeah. But that was the dessert was incredible as well. So plus the peach was pretty. So you good. had a dessert and you have no idea what it was. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. I just what, thought it was a chocolate. It was, it was a chocolate. chocolate and, and a, chocolate and something yeah, another. Just tell, well, something one of these chefs put together. You have no idea what it, it was. Good. Out. It has some kind of name like that. Tell him I don't know. Okay. I, so the Strand Bistro. I just the chef I just is knew, in town. Now. I just knew it was delicious. Delicious. 
it was a joy meeting him uh, a few weeks ago here when he was on the Butcher Bob show. Yeah, uh, Italian to, chef. I told me to have to come back. So. Yeah, but, uh, trained yeah. over there, got his certificates. You know, cook for a lot of restaurants over there, and somehow Ralph has got him over here, and he's cooking now for the Strand Bistro in downtown. He Justin. said he's training everybody else. Ralph says once he gets everybody trained, and they're going to have the grand opening and start advertising, but right now they're in a training session. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, they do that. But the chef himself didn't have to train. He already knew how to cook, oh, yeah, so he provided, he provided the meal last night, and it was... <laughs> It was off the chain. Did, did you see that big old oven they have in yeah, there? Yeah, I saw the oven. Yeah. yeah. They ate in the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it just kept bringing entree after entree. After. <laughs> it was pretty so good. So you walked in the uh, Strand Bistro and you waddled out, huh? Yeah, I waddled out. You That's waddled right. out. Exactly. You waddled out. <laughs> walked in, waddled out. Kind of like going on a cruise. But I'm just telling you, when it opens up, if you like lasagna, just go down there and ask for that eight layer lasagna. Because okay. that was. Eight layers. It was incredible. Mm. Why do you need eight layers? I mean, why can't oh. you do it in four? I mean, why do you have to double it? <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, you know, uh, I've had uh, uh, relatives in the past that, um, that have made like these uh, ten-layer cakes. You know, the layers are about, you know, eighth of an inch thick or something like that, a quarter inch. And you know, they just layer after layer after layer, you know. I got this ten-layer cake, 15-layer cake. And they were good. Let me tell you, my, my aunts and grandparents could cook. That's a good that's a good comparison. It's like a 10-layer chocolate cake. It's like <laughs> eight layer lasagna. It was good. Cooked by an Italian chef. Just yeah. imported from Italy. And the Avengers Endgame continues to sell hot. Oh, so, man. So Big movie. Big movie. Still haven't been able to see it. Can't get in yet. So hopefully get in later this week. You said you'll cry at the end of it. So apparently some of the superstars on their heroes must get killed off or something. I don't like that. I don't like it when, you know, in the last uh, Batman, Superman movie, you know, Superman dies. And, you know, and, and I just I don't like it where our heroes that are for justice and for, you know, for truth and for for um, for for, you know, all the good things in life get killed off. I, I don't like that. We'll have some members of the exchange club in tomorrow on the Butch and Bob show to talk about the big golf tournament. But again, they're asking for people to sign up for that Saturday event. Cost is two forty per team. It's a four person scramble. So again, gets underway at eight o'clock Saturday. Lunch is included. So you golfers out there, if you got a team, make sure you sign up today. Go by and see Katie or at Prime South Bank or call Katie at four two seven six six seven oh to get your team in. So but they'll be on hand tomorrow. I think Raymond and Sean and maybe Jim Neesmith, Smith. All three will be in the studio okay. tomorrow to talk about the exchange club golf tournament. Okay. Which they spend a lot of this money. They do that shop for the cop during the holiday season. Oh, yeah, season, they do a lot of things for the kids. Which is a great program. So, a lot of things for the so kids all year long. That's where a lot of this money goes. You know, people ask all the time, where's the money go? Well, that's that's where a lot of this money will go. Yeah, so that goes to that club. and the other uh, children programs that the Exchange Club um, sponsors each year and the charities they support when it comes to kids. Christmas will be here for you. Know, that's the way this, yeah, yeah. That's why this year's flying by. Are we in May? Okay, remember, if you have any questions or comments during the world-famous Butch and Bob show or at any other time, you can text us at our main line. Uh, we can't answer it because we're on the phone, uh, I mean on the air, uh, but you can text us at 912-427-3711, 912-427-3711. Our main business line is text enabled, and the text should just pop right up here on the computer screen if everything's working correct. Well, Bob, we've moved into May, and of course, that means Mother's Day is coming up, and then um uh, graduation on the 24th and memorial day weekend which will begin the official weekend of summer and um and we move into that hot summer weather i mean we're, we're already getting up to 90 already yeah i think it's already here so but it's better than cold weather i said i'll take hot over cold every day of the week you'll take hot over cold i'm not a, i don't i don't like cold weather uh, well i like it in the low to mid 70s and Low fifties at I, night. That's I can, me. I, I like lot, that. I can get a lot colder than I can warm. Oh, you can. Yeah, you just walk in air conditioning. No, the pool. you can put more clothes on. You know, when it's cooler. Yeah. I don't like cold weather. I mean, we don't need saunas down here in the south. You know, especially during the summer. I mean, you don't need to go to a sauna. All you got to do is just step outside. I like sunshine. Yeah, yeah I, I like sunshine. But I like warm weather. Glad it's here. Well, I could live low to mid seventies and then low fifties at night. If you like that, I just I'd be ha I'd be happy, man. <clears throat> but 
is the south, southeast Georgia. We're going to have humidity 90 to 100 percent most of the summer. We're going to have uh, temperatures in the low to mid 90s, sometime upper 90s, heat index over 100, and you can pretty well stamp that weather forecast for July and August. <laughs> We can go ahead and predict that now, Bob. Uh, we say it all the time. <laughs> July, August, weatherman has the easiest job Yeah, the easiest job around. Hot, sunny, chance of rain. Yeah, chance of afternoon thunder showers, hot, and heat index over 100. That's it. All right. Uh, someone just texted in, have you heard anything about the track at the uh, football field is such in bad shape? I know they voted to put the new track at the high school, correct, Bob? Uh, they're still expected to address that track at the state. But they're end. supposed to figure how they can resurface that. So, at the um, at the uh, football field, so people can the public can use it and not hurt themselves if they're using it. It's in bad shape. It's been in bad shape for it's a while. It's been in bad shape. It's amazing that you know we uh, couldn't get it resurfaced or get our money back after that uh, company did it several years ago. I mean, we had we started having problems with it right after almost they put it down, and nothing ever happened really to, to get it fixed correctly. And so, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the school board is addressing that. School superintendent school board is addressing that, trying to figure out what's the best thing to do to, um, to get it fixed. To me, it just seems like you have to go in there and asphalt it in some sort of way. That way, it'll it'll stand up to the um, all the people who use the uh, they use the uh, stadium for different events. Plus, you can drive on it and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about that. The new track that's going up to the high school, which will be a track for running, which will be easier on the joints and and hips and and all that. It'll be a regular track, and it'll be used just for track. And the bad thing is it's going to be on full display graduation night because they're not going to get it fixed between. Oh now no, and no, they won't get it fixed so, between before here and so the twenty fourth. Graduation, you'll see how bad it really is. Well, I guess they could have uh, you know uh, barriers so you can't so where you when you come in you can go have to go directly up, up into, into the, the sta- stands, sta- right. stands so you don't have to get on it. Yeah, probably be the thing to do. I, I'm, I, that's what I'd do. <laughs> Put barriers on there so when you come in the gate you have to go directly to the stands. So, uh, because it, I've been on that track a couple of times in the last, uh, couple of months and, um, uh, you play, you, you don't play dodge ball. You play, uh, dodge the pit. <laughs> you go around this hole, you go around that hole, you go around this divot, you know, <laughs> it makes, it makes uh, walking and jogging around that Bob, uh, you know, a challenge, you know, I says, I stop going there, go out to McMillan Creek, walk that trail. You walk the trail yeah. there at McMillan. So, Are can't. they still cutting holes in the boards? Yeah. Unfortunately, they are. I saw a now, who would want to go out to I a boardwalk? I saw Armstrong out there. Yeah. She's been walking out there. I told her she needed to put cameras out there. That's why you know you can put those uh, you can put those deer cameras out there. You know they don't cost much, and and um, find out who in the world is putting holes in the McMillan Creek boardwalk. I mean, right. why would you want to? I just don't. I I don't understand that, Bob. I really don't. I mean, what kind of satisfaction you get out of her cutting holes and cutting boards on a boardwalk? Apparently they do, though, because I mean, they do it on a weekly basis. So that's yeah, just I don't understand that. Sad. Mm. And I know that the bid they got to replace a uh, repair, the other boardwalk there on what is it, Fifth or Sixth Street, over to Eleventh Street, uh, uh, so was the, too, the, 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 the bid expensive. was way too high. It was more than what the whole thing cost in the first place. Right, so they haven't done anything since then, have they? Right. I thought they were going to try to get some local folks to work on it. Maybe donate. Time and that uh, kind of stuff. I was report out to get with David Earl, find out where we're standing on that. But I said the bid that came in was over the bid, what it cost to build the entire the whole thing, thing in the first place, yeah. Right, so. Well, sometimes it costs more to repair something than it as does. As far as to, I know, it's still shut down. <laughs> yeah, it's still been shut down for my, quite a while now, a couple of years. Right. It wasn't that first hurricane that came through? Not right. the last one, but the first, first one. one. Yeah. yeah, been shut down for quite a while now. It was a nice little walk through there. Oh, well. Sheesh. So you got any more meetings to go to this week, Bob? I know, that's it. There's no meeting. The meetings, got the ball games the tomorrow. Meetings, the meetings are right. next week. Like I said, first of the month, but the they mean on the Monday, the first month, Tuesday, the first month. So it's next week that the meetings begin. So the agenda is high for the county. So we got that on the news. But like I said, my main focus is tomorrow. That's Time right. Time's underway, 430. Can't wait. Come, please pack the park. And as Coach McDonald's mentioned many times, the home crowd makes a big difference. It does. It's an intimidating crowd. So 
Talked to several players last night at the ballpark. They're excited. So, I mean, they're focused. Coach McDonald said they've had the best week of practice all season long this week. So, team seems to be ready to go. I said as long as the pitching holds up, which has been lights out the last four games, four shutouts in a row. So, now, as I say, if the other team can't score, they can't win. That's right. Now, what did you say about um, uh, spring football? Spring football starts today officially. The spring, yeah, yeah, spring games the 17th of May. Gonna okay. be in Douglas. They're going to have a scrimmage against – Douglas County? and Brooks County. There's okay. going to be three teams there. They're oh. going to play a half football against Douglas, half football against Brooks County on that 17th. And we'll be on here. To, we'll be on hand to broadcast that scrimmage on the. Uh, it'll September. be here. No, it's going to be in Douglas. It's going to be at Coffee County. Okay. Coffee County. All right, in Douglas. Yeah. All right. So that's the 17th. Right. So they get uh, basically two two, little, weeks. two weeks to, two weeks to practice, two weeks and then to go to the place right. scrimmage. Yep. And then they'll hit the weight rooms and conditioning for the summer. And come back bigger, faster, and stronger in August. Uh, be here before you know it. Yeah. Graduation coming up on the 24th. Memorial Day on the 27th. Yeah. So, summertime. We can see it over the horizon. Uh, it's getting close. Those preseason magazines hit the shelves in July. So, I always look forward to that. So. Which ones? For, for college? Foot, yeah, college football preseason. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, the college. Yeah. Yeah. Athlon, Sporting News. I think there's three of them. I always get so it's always fun to read their projections on the top 25, and they got good in-depth interviews with coaches and players. So just it's always fun during the summertime to hit the beach and get the book magazines and read all about the upcoming football season. It's always a tradition, at least my tradition anyway. I always go by and get those three magazines and head to the beach and <laughs> check them out. Just check it out. Yeah. You're not checking out any of the um, scenery walking back and forth on the yeah, beach, I'm are you? I'm watching that, too. But they got, they, they got the scenery inside the magazines, too. They got the scenery they, inside. They always do the feature on the cheerleaders of the southeast. So that's oh, always, cheerleaders that's always of the southeast. Highlight. That's always a highlight. That's a highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Mize, those sporting magazines for the articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we do want to encourage folks to get their tickets to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, big fundraiser on Saturday night. The Wayne County, um, what's the name of it again? The, it's the Mr. Wayne County. Mr. Wayne County, County competition. Contest. We call it the Mr. Wayne County contest. Yeah, yeah contest. Mr. Wayne County contest uh, starting at 7 o'clock Saturday night there at the auditorium at Wayne County High School. Tickets are $25 for reserve, $20 regular admission, available at the Boys and Girls Club at the end of Orange Street here in Jessup. And uh, go by and get your tickets. Just the two times uh, this week and last week when we've had uh, some of the um, guys on, it's going to be fun. We had a great time yesterday. That was a great time with those guys in here those yesterday. Guys are gonna have, they, said they put on a good show. It's good entertainment. So it's a family event. So they'll have the People's Choice Award. You know, you walk in there early and put the money in the drawer. I mean, in the jar. So, okay. you know, support your favorite candidate. So. Should be interesting. Nice to do it every two years. Also, don't forget to get the hundred dollar ticket. They get the ten thousand dollar giveaway that night as well. So right. So should be a nice night. It's gonna be a big night Saturday night. Well, Bob, you have a great day. Okay. All right, world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by the Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cherry Street here in Jessup in downtown Jessup. We'll also our another sponsor is a Murphy Builder Supply on North East Broad Street. The Women's Health Center. In downtown Jessup, on Cherry Abroad, and by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. The world famous Butch and Bob Show!